Throughout the annals of history, humans have gazed at the nocturnal sky, documenting the radiant luminosities that twinkle and traverse above us. The initial renditions of celestial maps portraying stars and planets graced the walls of caves, serving as calendars and denoted by astronomical symbols. Subsequently, as the epochs unfolded, books and written records became the primary medium for articulating the prevailing beliefs about the cosmos during most times. As technology advanced coupled with a deepening comprehension of the universe, an increased number of celestial bodies within our solar system were unveiled. These included satellites orbiting Jupiter and Saturn, colossal ice giant planets, and frigid dwarf worlds. Nevertheless, there remained numerous uncharted realms, such as the hypothetical planet known as Vulcan. In the early 1800s, Vulcan was conjectured to be the nearest celestial body to the Sun, even closer than Mercury. It was even asserted that numerous reputable astronomers had claimed to have observed it. Nonetheless, it ultimately proved to be non-existent, and what many of them were likely observing were sunspots. In the mid-1980s, there was a proposition of a shadowy celestial body named Nemesis aimed at explaining the periodic mass extinctions experienced by Earth. The idea was whether a massive object situated at the outskirts of the solar system might be redirecting comets towards Earth for cataclysmic collisions. However, no such object of that magnitude has ever been located. Even in more recent times, an extensive global search has been underway for an elusive Planet 9, positioned somewhere beyond Neptune. However, as of August 2023, no discovery has been made. It appears that the quest for new planets lurking within the solar system is an ongoing endeavor. One of the most captivating examples of this search is the hypothetical planet named Phaeton, believed to have existed between Mars and Jupiter, thought to be the true fifth planet from the Sun. So what motivated scientists to seek this enigmatic world? Why did they believe it was present and what did they uncover in its stead? When William Herschel identified Uranus in 1781, it ignited a renewed interest in our solar system. After all, Uranus marked the first planet discovery in millennia. Consequently, astronomers of that era began scrutinizing the night sky, aspiring to be the next to uncover a new celestial body. However, locating a new planet resembled a challenging quest, akin to finding a needle in a haystack, given the vast expanse of the solar system. Yet, during that period a mathematical approach surfaced, offering a method to predict where one might initiate the search, thereby narrowing down the exploration area. This approach was referred to as the Titius Bode Law. The equation proposed that as you extend outward from the Sun, each successive planet should be positioned at a distance approximately double that of the one preceding it. When this formula was applied to the known planets of that era, it roughly estimated the distances of each of them, including the recently identified Uranus. Nonetheless, according to this formula, there was a vacant spot in the sequence, a planet that should have been positioned between Mars and Jupiter, approximately 2.8 astronomical units from the Sun. This intriguing gap in the planetary arrangement spurred numerous astronomers to embark on a quest to locate the predicted missing celestial body. Then, on January 1st, 1801, astronomer Giuseppe Piazzi detected an unfamiliar point of light moving gradually among the stars. Initially mistaken for a comet, he bestowed a upon it the name Ceres, after the Roman goddess of agriculture. Remarkably, Ceres, situated at 2.8 astronomical units from the Sun, seemed to confirm remarkably well to the Titius Bode law. Although Ceres appeared fainter than the other known planets of that era, indicating it was significantly smaller, many considered it to be the long-sought missing planet, the genuine fifth planet from the Sun. The enigma of the gap in the Titius Bode law sequence appeared to be resolved, with Ceres even being assigned a planetary Symbol. At that point, it seemed as though the inner solar system was in perfect order. Or was it? The initial excitement surrounding the discovery of Ceres quickly waned, as in 1802, just a year later, another object, named Pallas, was observed. Then in 1804, Juno was spotted, followed by the discovery of Vesta in 1807. These newly found objects shared a roughly similar orbit with Ceres, leading astronomers to suspect that they had encountered the first members of a new category of celestial bodies. Despite this, for approximately half a century, astronomy books recognized 11 planets in our solar system. The list included Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Vesta, Juno, Ceres, and Pallas followed by Jupiter, Saturn, and Uranus. Not long after, in 1846, Neptune was also discovered, 
However, Neptune's discovery did not conform to the Titius Bode law, as it was situated eight astronomical units closer to the Sun than predicted. This discrepancy led to the conclusion that the Titius Bode law was likely a cosmic coincidence, as it did not hold true for the outer planets. By the 1860s, most astronomers widely accepted that there was a fundamental distinction between the major planets and objects like Ceres or Pallas. Eventually, these objects were renamed as asteroids, and the region where they reside became known as the asteroid belt. So within a year of the missing planet discovery, it became evident that there was no missing planet within the asteroid belt. Instead, it consists of countless scattered rocks. But the question remained, where did these rock fragments originate? In 1823, Heinrich Wilhelm Olbers, the astronomer who discovered the asteroid Pallas, proposed that these objects were actually remnants of a shattered planet, giving rise to the planet Phaeton hypothesis. The name Phaeton was borrowed from a mythical Greek character which means shining one in Greek mythology. According to the myth, Phaeton was the son of Helios, the sun god, who drove his blazing chariot across the sky daily. One day Helios granted Phaeton's wish to take control of the chariot, but the ride turned disastrous as Phaeton struggled to control the horses. Consequently, the chariot came too close to Earth, scorching it, and then moved too far away from it, freezing it. Ultimately, after numerous complaints from celestial entities and Earth itself, Zeus struck Phaeton with a lightning bolt, annihilating him, a fitting name for a destroyed planet. The Phaeton planet hypothesis posits that the asteroid belt formed following the destruction of a planet that once orbited between Mars and Jupiter. This notion became known as the disruption theory and suggested several potential causes for the planet's demise. The first possibility is that it ventured too close to Jupiter, torn apart by the formidable gravitational forces of the gas giant. The second possibility is that it collided with another substantial celestial body, perhaps another planet. The third hypothesis is that it was annihilated by a hypothetical brown dwarf, a companion star to the Sun known as Nemesis. Lastly, the fourth possibility is that it experienced an internal catastrophic event that led to its fragmentation. So, was there indeed a planet that underwent a process resulting in it being torn apart, leaving only its scattered remnants orbiting the Sun? As intriguing as this concept may be, it is improbable. The main reason is that extensive studies of the asteroid belt have revealed that its collective mass amounts to just 4% of the Moon's mass. This suggests that it lacks the necessary material to have once coalesced into a planet. The prevailing notion now is that the asteroids are remnants from the early stages of our solar system's formation approximately 4.5 billion years ago. They represent the remnants of the gas and dust disk that encircled the Sun, known as the accretion disk, which gave rise to all the planets, moons, asteroids, and comets we observe today. Although the asteroid belt may appear as nothing more than a ring of drifting rocks around the Sun, it serves as a window into the past, allowing us to investigate a frozen phase in the history of our solar system, a glimpse into a time when material came together to form planetary embryos that never fully coalesced. But what if Phaeton had indeed formed? What characteristics would this hypothetical planet possess? Positioned in orbit between Mars and Jupiter, Phaeton would have likely been smaller than Pluto, making it the smallest major planet in the solar system. It probably would have been a desolate world, lacking a substantial atmosphere and lacking a magnetic field to shield its rocky surface from solar radiation. However, as with many smaller celestial bodies across the solar system, it might have sustained an underground ocean of liquid water beneath its crust, potentially warm enough to support life. We might have dispatched multiple spacecraft to explore its surface and even attempted landings. Despite the hopes of numerous astronomers in the 19th and 20th centuries regarding the existence of this hypothetical planet, extensive research into the asteroid belt has debunked the notion of of Phaeton. Nevertheless, even though it never existed, it still possesses a captivating narrative, one that has served as inspiration for both science fiction writers and scientists alike. This is the tale of a planet that was discovered, purportedly destroyed, and subsequently consigned to oblivion. I trust you found this captivating exploration of the uncharted world of Phaeton enjoyable. If you did, please tap the like button and subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I look forward to seeing you